Hello and welcome to Euphoria, the podcast all about the great glam and garish from Eurovision past. My name is Roland Bodenham and as ever I am joined by my co-host. She's the perfect combination of the sassiness of Sylvia Knight and the genius of Yon Ola Sand. It's Isabel <laughs> Chilmer. Hello, I am exactly those two things combined. How's it going Roland? It is going very well. It seems like spring is on its way over here and that makes me very happy. Uh, although it's meant to snow again on Tuesday, so that makes me sad. How are you doing? You're, you're, you're in the middle of a four-day uh, extravaganza weekend. Three days into a four-day Easter weekend and I am loving every second of it. I got very drunk. Well, I got quite drunk on Thursday. Yeah, yeah. I got very <laughs> drunk on Friday. I... <laughs> Spent yesterday trying to power through yeah. and not really managing to get drunk, but get quite tired. Yeah, that happens. Um, and then I've accidentally got a bit drunk today. Uh-oh, <laughs> pre-show so drunk. So I'm already two glasses of wine and very little food into um, um, my day. And I have with me right now uh-huh. a as yet to, still to be finished bottle of uh, Nero Davolo from Italy. Way, very nice. A lovely red um, wine. That sounds like you it sounds like you're completely nailing your Easter four day weekend. That's exactly really how it should be. I'm proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from yesterday yesterday was rough and but I you, feel like I yeah. missed out a lot of it. But but it was fine because it was only Saturday and I knew exactly. I still had two days left. Like exactly. even today. I'm just like I've got another whole day tomorrow. It's exactly. Just not, just do whatever I want to do. Yeah, you have to have a fallow day in a four weekend. It's like Glastonbury. You can't do it all the time, otherwise... You can't. It, I needed, a, I needed yeah. a day of somewhat day of, rest. A day of rest, yeah. It has to happen. A day of rest. But Jesus needed that as well when he died. Who did? Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, he had a day of rest. He chilled out for a bit and then he went, all right, I'll come a back now. A couple of days. That's and what... I'll be risen tomorrow <laughs> like Christ. <laughs> You, it, it, in a way, it's very appropriate. <laughs> I am. It might be blasphemous. I'm a vicar's daughter. I'm allowed to say it. You're a vicar's daughter. I am it's the fine. Eurovision you, Christ. That's what's you are. happening. <laughs> uh, so shall we? Shall we uh, crack open a uh, bev? Then I've got another beer because um, I actually did start my day with a um, what's a drink called that that is prosecco and orange juice. I always call that a Bellini, but a it's Bucks not. Fizz. A bu- <laughs> Course, Let's go Eurovision on this. It is fizz. a Bucks Fizz, technically. It is Bucks Fizz, yeah. Yeah, I started my we day We just call with it that. the most to sound more fancy. Yeah, no, it's always a Bucks Fizz. But I had one of them, so I'm doing all right as well. But I'm going to have a beer now. All right, I'm going to do a little pour my wine. Ready? Three, yeah. two, one, go. Very nice. Oh, Delicious. So refreshing. Mm. Can we get underway with Eurovision news? Uh, we, I feel like maybe we should have uh, been a slightly more somber Eurovision news song because mm. this week or these last two weeks we've sadly uh, once more lost uh, not just one but two icons of Eurovision. The first being uh, Eurovision host uh, many times in the UK, Katie Boyle. Um, but more, uh, not that one passing is more sad than the other, but a, no. an even bigger Eurovision icon, the winner of the first ever Eurovision song contest, Lis Asia, uh, passed away. Is that, am I saying that right? Yeah, first yeah. lady of Eurovision. I know, first passed away winner. this week. Um, she was uh, an icon and she was also someone who maintained her relationship with Eurovision uh, pretty much throughout her whole life. She she embodied the spirit of Eurovision. Now, I don't know, Isabel, if you want to explain how we're going to um, uh, mark these passings. Yeah, so we've decided because this was, um, I, I texted Roland the other day saying, are you going to do anything about them for your episodes? Mm. Obviously, we swap episodes every fortnight. We were thinking we'd do a mini, but actually what we're going to do is we've already, normally we wouldn't tell each other what the stories are, mm. but we've decided that for the next two uh, episodes after this, because we didn't want to spend some time to get this prepped properly. Mm. Yeah. Um, so in the next two episodes after this, they will be committed fully to yes that's the cat knocking something over <laughs> that ruined that moment sorry about that everyone we were just, being she just very knocked sincere. over a massive cardboard box in my bedroom and, and that's just ruined everything brilliant she's just patsy has ruined oh, this podcast <laughs> um ignoring that moment uh mm-hmm. we are going to spend the next two episodes we'll be committed fully to this and to katie so um if you want to get all your beautiful nostalgic remembrance 
um, done and dusted. We're going to do an homage to both of those phenomenal Eurovision women and just phenomenal women just yeah, in general completely. Um, in the next couple of episodes. So do stay subscribed to this wonderful podcast. And, and, and actually, uh, if you listen in close, Liz might be making a cameo appearance in uh, the story this week. But uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and might, see for that. By might, do you mean will? Uh, yeah, it will definitely, definitely will. <laughs> I mean, unless I mess up real bad and something terrible yeah. happens, then with them will. Uh, okay, let's um, move on to some any other business. Uh, we Ooh. have an email, and uh, thank the Lord, she's back. It's Reggie, the good doctor from down under. Reg, mate, how's it going? <laughs> Uh, Reg has sent us a lovely email um, with the subject line, It's been a long time. And she says, Hi guys, just dropping a quick message to say that I still love your work. Thanks, ah! Reg. Uh, <laughs> things are getting hectic for the hopefully soon to be Dr. Down Under. You're a Dr. Down Under in our hearts, Reg. Um, it, but it's nice to listen to your podcast to help me disconnect from work and get hyped for this year's Eurovision, which. I managed to get tickets to. She's going. Um, can't wait to hear the results of our collaborative song. See, Reg has the right idea. Keep up the awesome work, Reggie. She, that's, Love it. I'm very glad that we're able to help her disconnect slash distract her from her work of becoming a doctor. Yeah, I mean, definitely do focus on being a doctor. <laughs> be the best doctor you can be. Like, don't be a bit shit and then say, sorry, I listened to too much <laughs> Euphoria. Blame Isabella Molin for the fact that I've just... In, I'm now part of a malpractice suit. Oh, like I don't, although, we don't want to cause that, Reg. But yeah. Although also any, very happy that we bring joy to your or probably very stressful life right now. Yeah, a- absolutely. Yeah. And if there's anything you and I can do very well, it's uh, distracting people from Be doing distracting. what they should be doing. <laughs> yeah, I'm the worst for it. Yeah. The worst. Uh, yeah, re- I've been real bad in the office recently. Just there's been life. a lot of easy times to be distracting. We've, there's been a lot of boozy nights for the next oh, day. God. Just don't want to do anything. Yeah, you we just... had a great one. We had our, um, uh, as Ronan will know, uh, annually we have a bo- very big awards oh, do yeah. at our work that was um, last week, week four, mm-hmm. not this one, one before. Yeah. Um, and the next day in the office, obviously very quiet. The whole team goes. It's a big thing. We've put a lot of work yeah. into it. Everyone has. It's very boozy and very mm-hmm. light. Um, and the next day, very very little work is done um and there was one point uh, and the, and the day the next day in the office where um a group of about eight of us just sat around holding hands <laughs> it was re- like the human touch was needed that's how hungover we were wow, that we just really sat supportive. holding hands around Aww. the desk and it was beautiful that it was lovely. really beautiful <laughs> that's a really sounds like a lovely place to work put that on it your, was great put that on your glass door <laughs> Uh, well, there we go. So um, I don't know how we, I can't remember even how we got onto that, but uh, <laughs> but thank, thanks for that. E- yeah, <laughs> thanks. Oh yeah, that was it. Tangents. Thanks, thanks for that this email. This could be tangents Reggie. episode two. <laughs> Distractions, <laughs> rambling, whatever. Um, uh, thank you for that email, Reggie. Uh, if you would like to get in contact with us, you absolutely can. You can give us an email on our email address is euphoriapodcast at gmail dot com. And we're also on Twitter uh, at EuphoriaCast. I'm really bad at checking it, but we do, we, and we we'll do matter. So definitely do like yeah, get to this fire that as well. But if you've got anything to tell us, you want to tell us a story idea, <laughs> join in with the song. You'll hear more about the song at the end of the episode where we're at with that, because um, this is a, a group effort. Obviously, I've got some. I've got some song stuff to say. Remind me at the end, because I will forget. I, I will do. Yeah. Um, some song feedback. Excellent. Awesome. Um, and. But just, just, chat, just Steve, you just want to say hiya. Yeah, just that hiya. Um, all right, okay, cool. Shall we, uh, shall we get straight on with it then, Isabel, and move Tell on? Tell us your story, Roland. To the story. I've got a title for my story this week. Are you ready Ooh. for my title? I am. The title of this story is "Songs, Lies, and Chihuahua Shit." Oh, I'm here <laughs> for it. I'm okay. ready. So here we go. Um, it begins. Even from a young age, it seemed as if nothing was going to get in between Aljona Lanskaya and an opportunity to sing. Born in Belarus in 1985, from the first grade in school, Aljona had joined the school choir and then began performing in groups at children's disco parties. Contrary to a lot of stories we've had on here in the past of singers either 
with parents who are already in the industry or with fairly wealthy parents. Aliona had to support herself and so enroll, enrolled at the Mogilev Belarusian Russian University studying financing and credit. Really well, that's glamorous. Dish water, is it? <laughs> However, her determination to succeed by any means possible was clear during these, these years as she would regularly travel taking part in singing contests across the country. Um, over the course of the next few years, Aliona continued performing in various music competitions throughout Belarus, taking part in the Belarus Song of the Year in 2005, 2008, and in 2009, she entered and won her first international competition, the European Cup 2009, obviously, as I said. Badass. I don't know how, like, where are all these singing competitions, Isabel? Because I feel like... We could definitely just make a career of just going to all of these ones and hanging out there. Why? In what sense? Can, <laughs> I mean, you can make a phenomenal pop record when you put your mind to it, but can either of us sing? No, no, I just meant hanging out. Like, they have free food there, I'm sure. Like, just, uh, when just I meant, go along for Just the go lols. along and eat and probably sleep under a table or something. That would be all right. Sleep... <laughs> <laughs> you're thinking big. I like I like the way you're thinking, Bodnam. Really into it. That's the yeah. dream. Just from singing competition to singing competition. Free food, it, sleeping under a table. I'm happy with that. Uh, so yeah, um, it was also in that year, uh, Isabel, that uh, Aliona became the first artist ever to distribute her album for free in exchange for happy stories, which she intended on turning into a book. Ooh, okay, explain that. They explain I mean, that one. That's that's about it. She 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 gave her album away for free, and in return, she asked people to send a happy story for her to turn into a book. I don't know if the book ever came out. It was just one article I read in in a piece on her. Um, but I feel like she. I feel like your plan to eat free food and sleep under tables is thinking bigger <laughs> than her trying to make a book just on random happy stories people have sent her have you ever asked the general public on mass to do something doesn't not a lot not a lot back out. well not a lot just, back from just them, look no. at last season when we tried to get people to send us a I song know. <laughs> yeah all you, all you lot listening that's directly targeted yeah. at you I'm not even going to pretend we, it's not we, we should have learned from aliona really didn't uh, send anything <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, I know actually you, quite a lot of our conversation recently uh, has been about weird translations uh, from uh, other languages back to English. And in my research, I came across one which I rather liked and also sim- sim- simultaneously found pretty problematic. Uh, so it was, an, it was in an article talking about her determination and independence uh, from a Belarusian news company. And they explained, she drives the car and contrary to the opinion that blondes rarely look under the hood, can handle independently in the event of a broken iron horse. Oh, right. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> thanks to that Belarusian... As a blonde, he was a phenomenal driver. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to take real offence. <laughs> uh, anyway, we'll, we'll move on. I just thought I would point out that... Um, mm, so... Uh, With all of these successes, Isabel, there was one contest that had remained elusive to Aliona. That was until 2012, when Aliona officially entered the national final for Belarus's entry into the Eurovision Song Contest. And this uh, contest was called Eurofest. Um, And she she was joining uh, four other acts in the final. The acts were Gunesh, Victoria, Aleshko, Yasari, and Light Sound. Um, light Sound. Light Sound, yeah. Snazzy. I mean, immediately, I wish the story was about them. Light Sound. <laughs> light Sound. Uh, now, from very early in the contest, Aliona was a favourite to win. However, there seemed to be a weird disconnect between Aliona's position in the bookies' favourites and the actual quality of the song. To give you an idea of what some of the general public thought of the song, uh, I turn now to an article published by Wee Wee Blogs, um, which at the time describes Aliona's performance as Aliona seriously needs to work on her pronunciation. I've been speaking English for 30 years now and seriously struggle to transcribe the lyrics. 
Finally figuring out the lyrics wasn't exactly satisfying. If it weren't obvious from the melody, this song is three minutes of cliché, pass the bucket, Wee Wee needs to vomit. Oh dear. <laughs> so not a particularly glowing review there from uh, our friends at Wee Wee Blogs. Uh, but Isabel, let's have a quick listen to the performance, shall we? But I know you will save me somehow You don't need me like the chains of the deepest night Oh, well, there's a lot to deal with there's a, there's a lot going on. I think the thing, the thing that uh, Wee Wee blogs were pointing out is that actually there's a lot going on on stage, but... Can you remember a single word that she said in that song? No. What I do remember yeah. is the violinist wearing a sleeveless vest. Ah, now I feel like I feel like that's a red flag if I've ever seen one. <laughs> if if anyone who you meet or hang out with is a is a violinist who wears sleeveless oh, shirts, then uh, no. that's something you got to avoid, right? You got to discuss that mm-hmm. with your therapist. Have have, have a word. Uh, <laughs> There's a there's a lot of acrobatic stuff going on stage. A woman climbs on a man's back. Yeah, it's weird. With all her feet, like with her feet, like stood on his back while he is also stood up. Yeah. But, and it, it's a odd. Bit. But I'm really what I'm, I'm really into though. It's the heart shaped balloons in the audience. Yeah, there's lots of those. One I paused it right now and it's just blocking her face. I feel like the camera crew probably <laughs> found them not useful, but. I don't know, I always find it weird with those performances when it's just the singer standing still and then like something really intense going on with other people in the background. It's yeah. kind of like, what's, where's the talent here? It's someone else doing something good. Yeah, and what's your focus? Why aren't you, yeah, why aren't you, why isn't the, either the production, anyone involved in it, why are you not confident enough in yeah. the singer themselves yeah. to be able to hold this? It was a bit like it? the, you know, that Russian entry that was the um, ice skater that was just in a little circle Mm. on the stage and then the singer was just next to them. And it was like two unrelated things going on. But I quite like I quite like the ballsiness of putting an ice skater on the stage in a little ring. So that that gets a pass from me. Um, In in a poll on the Wee Wee Blog site as well, um, just to really hammer home the the fact that it wasn't a great song. Uh, Aliona's song finished last out of the five songs Ooh. that were being performed at the con- at the contest. Um, so the night of the final came around, and it seemed to be going great. And in fact, I found this really brilliant report um, from someone who was just like hanging around backstage at the uh, at the night. And this seems like one of the best parties ever. Basically, there was some real like Eurovision royalty decided to show up just to kind of hang out. So um, Alexander Ryback was spotted backstage. I mean, he does just turn up anywhere. Oh, yeah, he'll come to the opening of an envelope, mate. <laughs> but he's, he's the Peter Pan of Eurovision. It's allowed. He it's is, allowed. of course, yeah. Sorry, it, the cat is... I just got to point out, the cat is scratching the scratching post again. Okay. Where you're just per- got to give it a second. Let her get out of her system. Because <laughs> if I keep stopping her, she's just going to keep coming back. It's fine. Just, just, we'll just imagine that it's a cat in all of our houses as well. As we're Good. Yeah, just, just, as, just to point out to anyone, if you do hear the audio of this bit, <sighs> that the cat... Um, I need to use the cat's scratching base to put the podcast For- kit on, but obviously that means that the cat keeps trying to scratch it. Yeah. To be fair, it is it is your. Fault. It is hers. Like yeah, it's very, it is this her is like before equipment. you know when we used to do it at the kitchen. And she'd play with the ball. Yeah, and it's yeah. a bit like, well, it's her kitchen to play with her ball she, in. You know, likes... we're podcasting in her yeah ball are. playing environment. Yeah. yeah, of course. Same thing. I'm podcasting on her scratching post, she... so occasionally she might scratch it. And she likes to take part in the podcast. She's a podcast. she's a good contributor. <laughs> She'll <laughs> she contribute really to anything she can. <laughs> So also hanging out backstage at this show, uh, Isabel, was mm-hmm. one Lysia Asia. Oh, uh, lovely. Who, as we said earlier, was the winner of the first ever Eurovision Song Contest. And there's a really great picture that we'll have to put, put out on Twitter um, of her with some of the contestants that night. And she looks completely glamorous she's like perfection um oh yeah real glamour puss yeah real glamour puss and she yeah. also didn't come alone uh, but she decided to bring her pet chihuahua who whilst lysia was on stage performing 
decided to take a little shit in the green room. Oh, so, well, I mean, a chihuahua's going to do that. Yeah, and it's it's a little thing. It's like a it's like a rat dropping, basically. But, it's, uh, yeah, it's basically mouse poo. <laughs> like my cat definitely does bigger poos than a chihuahua. Yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> so despite the chihuahua shit, everyone seemed to be having a good time. That was, however, until the end when the winner was announced. Mm. After some dramatic tension, it was announced that the winner of Eurofest 2012 was indeed Aliona. As that was announced, the runners-up, Light Sound, proceeded to trash the green room. They began throwing glasses at the ceiling and no. smashing plates. <gasps> Another performer, Ganesh, stormed off the stage without saying anything to Aliona. And the only person who hugged Aliona was the winners of last year's Eurovision who were there as a special guest. So... It was clear that a lot of people were very unhappy with this result. Um, as, as she came off stage, Aliona explained to a journalist, um, what can I say? It's not my fault that they behave this way. I think each of these entries were worthy to go to Eurovision. And from what I heard, the difference between participants was only a few hundred votes because everyone was so strong. But we must understand that the final decision here is made by the audience. And that is fair, wouldn't you think, mm-hmm. is, Isabel? It's a democracy. What people say goes. Her, yeah, it's not her fault. Yeah, exactly. Well. <laughs> oh. Soon after this uh, <gasps> announcement, Wee Wee Blogs published an article named "Tragedy in Belarus: Aliona Lakskaya Wins Eurofest 2012." So Wee Wee Blogs aren't letting up. They're not holding back in any way. No. Um, the opening of this article says. Armed with an arsenal of bad lyrics, a tacky dress, and questionable intonation, mm. Aljona Lanskaya has won the right to represent Belarus at Eurovision 2012. A nation should be in mourning. Ah, my God, so good. <laughs> so you know how we've discussed, and I was talking to someone about this today. Yeah. You know how we've discussed before about the fact that we were like, I mean, it would be good if we were affiliated with a Eurovision type group like that would be great but probably no one would yes, affiliate themselves with us we're, because we're, we're mean about Eurovision yeah, entries it's like we're not nice enough about everyone and that's fair enough like they don't want someone being rude yeah wee wee blogs way to go that's so we, anyone from wee wee blogs listening to this if you would like us to be yeah, the we official could, wee wee blogs Eurovision podcast happy we can be, to do so because you're as bitchy as we are <laughs> If not worse, actually. Yeah, to be yeah. Fair. I don't know if um, I don't know if they've toned it down in recent years. This was back in 2012, but uh, I've seen there's definitely videos that of I've seen there's one there's one um, of uh, some from Wee Vlogs Wee Vlogs going in to interview Barre yes from Spain a couple of years ago, and as they enter the room before they say anything, she goes, "You were really mean about me. Oh, you were really mean about oh, me." No. And they were like, "No, no, no, we love you, we love you." She's like, mm-hmm. and like really Ooh. is sassing them back, like Uh-oh. knows exactly. <laughs> they are mm-hmm. just like nope no well there you go <laughs> um so my question is though isabel how could a song that was so widely reviled by critics become so successful when performed in the national final against much more competent songs well the answer wasn't too far away in the comments section of that very article in Wee Wee Blogs, someone posted a link to a fairly obscure Belarusian news blog which claimed that they had in their possession evidence of attempts to rig the competition in favour no. of Aliona. No. So, so in this news story, they show an image of a document which is in uh, Belarusian um, it, I, I've translated it, but it's still kind of hard to figure out. So I'll read it and then I'll explain kind of what the implications are. So it okay. reads, The Department of Education Executive Committee reports that the 14th of February 2012 at 6pm, Channel TBD1 and BT2 will show the finals of Eurofest. At the end of five participants is Aljona Lakskaya of the Mogilev region who has reached the finals of the competition. You will need to conduct organisational work and organise text voting in support of the students during the competition. Also, we will inform you on the website of the newspaper Komsomolakskaya Pravda uh, in Belarus carried out preliminary votes 
and you need to organize support for Alyona Lanskaya from the students voting. No. Results from each district will be monitored. So no. as, as we can kind of gather from that note, um, th- that note was published before the competition, obviously, um, is that Alyona, the allegations are that Alyona had aides inside the educational department who were encouraging students to vote for her and that there was already this pre-written script announcing Aliona uh, was the winner before the contest had even taken place. No. Right? Scandal. So the report was immediately put under investigation by the Belarusian government, uh, during which time Aliona remained very quiet. And just 10 days later, the president of Belarus, Alexander Lukashenko, called a press conference together and made the following announcement. It is sad that we have to deal with these issues at the level of the president. But the question is not whether I engage in Eurofests or Eurovision. The question that is brought to the president's level is quite different. The question of justice. I have been informed by two groups investigating the issue that the the results of the final of the contest was fraudulent. No! I, I do not know why. Or how we will deal with this, whether it is here or in the court of law. Oh. The president is taking no shit there. He is taking it very seriously. I'm, I'm always really excited when the head of a nation gets involved in Eurovision. <laughs> they must be like, what, really? I have to, I'm really going to go and do this? This isn't, I didn't get into politics to, to comment on Eurovision. I would That's have done. a lot. That's a lot, right? That's a lot to deal with. That's like one of the strongest statements I think I've heard from a leader of a nation. (laughs) And and it is about cheating at the level of of Eurovision. So the result was immediately withdrawn and the second place group, Light Sound, were announced as the representatives going to Eurovision 2012. They should have been banned for smashing the place up though. No, I feel like it was justified. No, I mean, I mean, you can be, yeah. I mean, it's pretty rad, and they're called mm-hmm. Light Sound. But also, you'd be a bit. I'd feel really bad if after doing that. I mean, yes, you've been proven that it was really bullshit that she won. Yeah. But you would. I feel a little bit embarrassed then to be, you know, to them being out as, oh, these are oh, winners. Light Sound. Be like, oh, sorry about the green room, guys. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry about smashing that. We, we overreacted there, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> Well, there you go. Um, and also, sadly, Light Sound never made it beyond the semi-finals of Eurovision. Oh, that year, well, so fuck those guys. They didn't do very well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, as far as I can tell, as well, as well, there really weren't that many repercussions for anyone involved in this whole scandal. Mm. So I couldn't see any news reports of anyone in the Department of Education uh, having any sort of punishment dealt upon them. And even less for Aliona, who just one year later re-entered Eurofest and won. Shit, that that oh. takes some balls, right? What? To just be like, I'm I'm re-entering. Um, well, I she- mean, the Tories <laughs> are literally being investigated right now for um, yeah. for illegal uh, campaigning yeah. during an election, which meant they won. Which not only meant they won, but meant they had to do the Brexit referendum, which they did. And now we are leaving the EU, and they are still cocky as fuck about everything they yeah, do. They yeah. um, uh, even though they are still currently, as far as I'm aware, being investigated for like huge huge fraud and now brexit's being fraud. investigated as well right the leave campaign is being investigated as well so yeah it's all... yeah because of now it's affiliation to um <sighs> all of that yeah i mean that's <laughs> pe- people bad people Don't are not any... dissuaded no. by being uh continuing to try and be no. either successful or famous well, yeah. through their bad behavior like well, as we have seen time and time again um people are just the worst <laughs> <laughs> and it, they and it are just really bad. So Aliona yeah. went to Eurovision. She became the third Belarusian performer to ever make it to the final night of Eurovision. Uh, she did only reach 16th place on the night, pulling in 48 points. Um, better than we've done a lot. As, well, exactly, yeah. And Way as it point, better than we've done. <laughs> as it points out on her Wikipedia page, she did much better in a ranking of the most beautiful participants of Eurovision oh, 2013. Fuck off. No, fuck right off. <laughs> she, fuck she right took, off right she now. She took second place. Um, and I'm actually unable to find who the winner was, but I'm assuming it's just Jon Ola every year, right? He oh. just, <laughs> 
that if it's not then there is there is fraud going on there <laughs> yeah no, that's that vote rigging if your yeah, knowledge does not win every it's just like a ceremonial thing it's like it's like elections in Russia. It's just, we know what's going to happen. It's yon again. Yeah. But we do it anyway, just to kind of, you know, as part of the process. The most beautiful you. Go, go jump in the ocean. Whoever created that. <laughs> and I don't think that's an official, it's not a, a, a affiliated with the EBU or Eurovision, I think. Absolutely it's... not, because it's disgusting. <laughs> it will just be just blonde busty women oh yeah yeah for sure for sure yeah anyway um aliona anyway continue, continue, anyway oh well <laughs> what can you do eh? um <laughs> aliona <laughs> continues singing to this day and the whole debacle of the rig votes seem to have been swept under the rug um and that kind of i mean i, I don't it's a kind of a bit of a anticlimactic ending however i will say if that there's one thing to learn from this story it's never leave your chihuahua alone in the green room while you're performing <laughs> on stage <laughs> but that's that's kind of it because uh she i'm into nothing it bad happened <laughs> that's a great story mate right i know lots of belarusian translation uh from google had to go into that because it was pretty buried <laughs> but um it's it's such a sh- uh, like because i love a euro eurovision scandal and it was i was so disappointed that this didn't like end up with like a complete yeah overhaul of the case, system people being banned from doing stuff forever no it didn't happen it wasn't as dramatic mm. as that it was just like although the president speaking <laughs> on an across the nation was is pretty dramatic really real dramatic oh the day that theresa may <laughs> talks publicly about year revision <laughs> Is the day that I rethink my my views towards that absolute... Theresa May has literally never been as passionate about anything as that president was about (laughs) about that statement. And that is, you know what, that's going to be from now on, whenever anyone tries to like intellectually push me on the t- on, on my views of the Tory party and Theresa May yeah. and poli- politics yeah. that's what I'm going to use yeah. Theresa May has never been as passionate about anything <laughs> as, as the-, the Belarus president was about potential vote rigging in Eurofest <laughs> in 2012 uh, 2012 yeah 2012, 2012. Um, so that was I my I don't think sto- we've got enough UK <laughs> listeners for it to make sense for us to have this <laughs> regular they passionate hatred about the Tories they get but- it we're all we're all lovely liberal Just, people, we're I'm liberal sure. Guys. Mainly. We're real liberal. Yeah, yeah. Real liberal. Bit. Real liberal. Anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that was my story of Aliona. And now, Isabel, we move on. And I'm quite excited about this next bit because if you recall, listeners, last week um, we decided that this week we would play a little game. Uh, I forgot the game. That's fine. I'm, I forgot I'm, about it, but I remembered I, it now, but I forgot about it. <laughs> and now I've I, got excited. Yes. So w- so the game was that I would take <laughs> lyrics from a previously produced and performed <laughs> Eurovision song, translate it several times, turn it through Google Translate lots of times, and record it with a different backing track, and uh, maybe you know make it make it quite different to the original, <laughs> and then Isabel would try and guess what the original song was. Oh God, I wish I hadn't drank so much wine now. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to do first is we're going to listen to it. I do have a title for the song, but I'm I I worry that that might be it might give you a, a hint anyway. But um, we are going to listen to the song. And actually, as a, as a genuine, like, we've not gone off the task of writing a new song because I'm actually, um, there's a few ideas in here that I really like. Uh, okay. But then we will play the guessing game of which Eurovision yeah. song has been translated. Play along at home. Forests cannot wait, my boy gets quicker, better, better, nearer, release your reality. They left me down, this is the only one in love Earn money Cause I'm near the water I think I'm going to the lake, see what you see You can also read the letter And that's the only one I love It's your problem Flashlights burning, hold some get searched. They eat the waves, and which one is called the world? They 
left me down This is the only one in love Earn money Cause I'm near the water I think I'm going to the lake See what you see See what you see See what you see See what you see You can also read the letter Read the letter And that's the only one I love It's your problem It's your problem It's your problem It's your problem Right <laughs> Right Are you thinking now? What What so, do you have any... Is there anything that you're thinking? Can any, you repeat some... Do you have the lyrics written down? I do, yeah. Do you want me to give you the title of the song? Okay, go, go on then. The title of the song is Near the Water. Right. Some of the lyrics... Um, it opens with the line, Forests cannot wait. My boy gets quicker. Better, better, nearer. Release your reality. They left me down. This is the only one in love. Earn money. Because I'm near the water. I think I'm going to the lake. See what you see. You can also read the letter. And that's the only one I love. It's your problem. Do you have anything? <laughs> it's really hard because the song's completely different as well. So the, I mean, don't, the only thing... It has vaguely even reminded me of that's Eurovision based. Yeah. Is OG <laughs> Lights and Shadows. N- no, no, no. Think think different. Think the music is the music is very different. I've I've probably made it very difficult for you. So that opening opening line, Isabel, is 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 one line that is reasonably close to the original okay, opening line. Okay, say it again. Forests cannot wait. Forests, I'm going to get this. For, forest is wrong. Forest is wrong. Forest is, it's not even wood related. It's not, that's just a weird translation. Can't wait. The two lines that are close to the original, and I have them side by side on my screen right now and I'm looking at them, uh, are the opening line of the song. Uh, there are two words that are very similar, which are can't wait, as you pointed out. And then the opening line of the chorus, I'm near the water. <laughs> Wait, it's not Waterline by Jedward. Yes, it Are is. Are you kidding me? It's Waterline <laughs> by Jedward. <laughs> Floodgates. Can't, can't wait. wait. <laughs> oh my God. That's Waterline by Jedward done through translation. That is Waterline by Jedward done through Fucking translation. <laughs> It's literally a different song. Like, we can do this for all the songs and get away with it. No one's going to sue us. So I think the thing, I think oh. the, it's, a re- it's a really genuinely good technique to come up with, like, a new song. It's genius. O- obviously, like, I've done very little to this, to the lyrics, because it's it's funny that they're completely nuts when you... Yeah, like, but you could, co- you could find, you know, you could finesse them a little yeah, bit. Yeah, absolutely. I wouldn't necessarily end verse one with the line, earn money, because... Earn <laughs> that's my favourite line. <laughs> earn money. It's like, that's like weird <laughs> subliminal... Well, like, I've, sp- like, I've spoken to a few people over the last couple of weeks about this um, yes. new tra- trajectory for yeah. our songwriting, yes. and they've all been really into it really yeah, right? into it it's com- it's it's revolutionized how people write songs i'm sure like <laughs> it, it, we'll all be doing it by this time next year that's Everything. really funny we don't know, however we are, ed- you edit the podcast now <laughs> um to whether or not we include it twice but if yeah. we if we don't include the song or at least bits of the song twice guys yeah now that you know it's Jedward, yeah, go listen. back and have a listen with the lyrics up on the screen mm-hmm. because it's real good. Yeah, and you do, there are some things that pick up and there are some things that connect. Like you see yeah. waves at the same time, you see flashlights. It's a weird, it's a weird thing, but... And some of it becomes earn money. And some of it becomes earn money, yeah. And you can also read the letter and it's your problem. It's your problem. <laughs> it's your problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm um, learning. I'm learning Italian. I'm trying to learn some yeah. basic Italian before I go to Sicily in May. Very nice. Um, and I've started using Michel Thomas. Um, yeah, I used to yeah. use him. You really, really helpful. Really good. But yeah. after the, I've literally done the first bit. Not even completed the first full episode. Yet. Yeah. And I was uh, telling my friend earlier that um, the bits that I've learned, they were like, "Go on, then. What have you learned in your, you know, hour of Italian lessons?" And I was like. I know how to say 
perché non, non è possibile parlare così. Which what means, does that mean? Why is it not possible for you to do it like that? <laughs> That's perfect. I feel How like that's perfect. How great is that to say to someone? <laughs> Perché? Why, why Perché? is it not possible? Why? <laughs> Perché non è possibile per le così? Oh, why is it not man. possible for you to do it like that? that what a great. great thing to be able to say. So and I also useful. know how to say non capisco niente, which means I don't understand anything. <laughs> yes, that's the perfect one. I don't understand anything. Literally, Sorry. from this tangent, point onwards. Tangent, tangent. Um, real good, Roland. Like that a lot. Yeah, yeah you right. Could, you could even just finesse those lyrics a little bit. Yes, tweak them up. But I mean, and... now, that, now that I know this works, I literally have 50 years of Eurovision songs to translate. <laughs> so I, don't, I can move on to whatever's next. Um, what do you really think about the music? It, was, it went on a slightly more kind of, um, uh, um, what's the danger zone kind of, uh, lo, lo, like slightly more Yeah, mellow. a bit slower. What did you Again, think? Again, they, they make, you know, danger zone, love injected, really yeah. strong, iconic, yeah. um, popular, now, especially nowadays, like really fitting into what, yeah. the, what culture is and music yeah. is yeah. now, fits in great with that and would potentially be a real big seller around europe yeah but not gonna win not gonna win it for you you're right i think so the ones we were doing earlier this season were probably middling and maybe yeah. this is like upper middling like because yeah. it stands out a bit but it's not yeah. it's not a, a winner yeah yeah no you're right you're right but uh, still we're, we're getting there we're improving we're tracking on i definitely kind of feel like at least for the next week or two we should continue this game because I had a lot of fun playing the game. Oh, I'm into it. Yeah, even if you want to do something different and you only do maybe 30 seconds, the first 30 seconds, like first verse, first chorus. Yes. I'm into playing this because it's a hoot when you find out what it is. It's real good. I'm going to listen back to this now repeatedly and be like, this is waterline. This is incredible. Um, Yeah, so I spoke to... Uh, so we bit of this is the song feedback I have remembered it okay good good, um, good. from Benji from London um, feeding this back to me the <laughs> other day was really into the idea that we've got for this series yeah. in terms yeah. of building the song and he was saying that um, well, we were discussing this on Friday night that basically if we were if we were going to do the thing that we are not wanting a, a, the UK to do, yeah. basically, which is join in with a fad too late, like put yeah. in the wrong song because we've kind of joined in with something too late. It was like yes. this year, what would do because of the zeitgeist do really well is if you had a song that had the words me too in it. Oh, yeah. But only if it was in a, in the 2018 entry if it was in the 2018 competition like putting it in for 2019 too late too late yeah, 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 like this yeah. is gonna you know not saying me too is gonna end not saying that the women's revolution no. is going to end anytime soon i mean let's be fair it probably will men are the oh, worst God. but <laughs> it <laughs> i hope i hope not I, obviously i hope not i want women to run the world because we're much more sensible yeah. um that would be for next year t- just too late to do they but for this yeah. year if it was just a subtle one not the whole song around me it too. but just yeah. a very subtle like me too me- bit in it and it's a very yeah. yeah it's a very memorable uh sort of phrase me too isn't it and you can mm. fit it into a lot of things netta netta's um performance netta's song from israel is a bit oh me my too, god it? it's so great yeah. yeah yeah that fits in with the zeitgeist of this year because it's yes. all like yeah it's about a woman going no Fuck. i'm not yeah. i'm not doing what I'm you want me toy. to do i'm having a great yeah, yeah. time i'm gonna be a chicken yeah yeah <laughs> if that's what i've <laughs> that got is what the, song. the song's about that is definitely what the song's about jesus uh, she if she if she can be great live doing that yeah. and i've not seen any live performances of her at all yet because i'm kind of although i like to do my pre eurovision research yeah I it's don't like to go too deep. Too much. Yeah, yeah. Because I like no, it to be sure. a surprise on the night on of the, the night. semi-finals. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, so I've not I... looked at any of anything else apart yeah. from that perform the video, video of that. Yeah. If she does that great on the night, mm. she's won. She's won. She's I've won. Uh, I've heard that she is more than capable of being oh, a live performer. God. So oh. I haven't seen anything, but from what I've heard, uh, she is strong. So. Uh, I've... Here's played that to many non-Eurovision people and they're all yes. obsessed with the song now. It's great. It's 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 really, really genuinely good. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> all right. 
<laughs> well, we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up there um, because it's oh, not that time. it's good that you're the boss, isn't it? Because otherwise, this would just go on for hours. I've got rambling. a little clock up now. I've I've added it to my uh, screen when I record a little clock, so I know exactly how long we've been recording. No, and, uh, you're such a grown up. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now I know that I am going to wrap this thing right up and say yeah. thank you all for listening. If you want to yeah. get in touch. Uh, with advice or feedback or tell us how much you love playing that game it's euphoriapodcast at gmail.com or on twitter at euphoriacast yeah do let us know if you managed to guess Chedwood. yes if you've got that in one impressive then... don't lie we'll know if you're lying <laughs> we'll know uh, and tune in next time for euphoria but for the meantime have a lovely two weeks and we'll see you next time happy love Jesus. you bye bye